What is good, Mexit planners? Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Yucatan News Weekly Update. Today, we're gonna get right into it and talk about our top story, which is taxes and wages. Let's get it. All right, y'all, so here in the state of Yucatan, the real estate market is absolutely booming, particularly here in Merida. And in the last couple of years, there hasn't been any increases in the property taxes or other taxes associated with purchasing real estate. Recently, the governor of the Yucatan in his budget floated the idea of raising the taxes on property, on property acquisition and other things associated with that. So they're trying to change the Ley de Hacienda Municipal in 2022. This would be an increase in property taxes from 4% to 6.5%. It was only 2.5% in 2020, and in 2021, there was absolutely no change. The College of the Notaries here, which is basically notaries are uh, government-appointed attorneys, and those are the ones that process and do closings and things of that nature. They do your title searches when you buy property here in, in the Yucatan or in Merida. They're appointed by the state. Well, the notaries wrote a letter and said this is absolutely bad uh, for real estate, you know, for the real estate market and for person purchasing properties if you raise these taxes. And so with the new proposal, the city stands to gain a proposed increase of 4.3 billion pesos. So to put that into some perspective, that's about 214 million US dollars in 2022. That is an increase of over 35% from 2021. So the notary suggests that this is not an even increase for all areas, right? Areas such as like the Yucatan Country Club versus say the south of the city are gonna see a disproportionate increase in taxes because that area has uh, a higher land value. I suspect that they're going to ultimately pass an increase in property taxes because the real estate market here is red hot. Now, switching to other types of taxes, in 2020 and 2021, the license registration process has been suspended due to the pandemic. Now, after two years, the governor has put in his budget to include applying for vehicular tags and registration. So he's now going to um, start back up in 2022, in January of 2022, they're starting back up the registration of tags and uh, reg or the registration of vehicles and license tags for the state of the Yucatan. So for the past 25 years, tags have been good for at least two years. Uh, there will be a discount for those that pay early. So if you need to get a new tag, or registration, go ahead and do that as soon as you can. But in 2022, in January of 2022, in just a few weeks, we're gonna have registration and the tag office back open to register vehicles that have been sold over the last two years. The big story that may not seem like a big thing for many people is that the national minimum wage is going up. So Mexico has decided that they're gonna increase the minimum wage from 141.7 pesos per day, which is about $6.74. They're gonna increase that by 22% to 172.87 pesos per day. Now that is currently the equivalent of about $8.23 per day, not per hour. So when we talk about minimum wage here in Mexico, we're talking about $8.23 per day. That's the increase rate. Currently, they only get $6.74 per day. It's very, very difficult to afford housing, food, and all of those things on minimum wage. So they're gonna raise minimum wage by 22%. They will continue to increase the minimum wage to 228.75 pesos all the way to 2024. So in 2022, there's gonna be an increase of 22% to 172.87 pesos. 2023, there's gonna be an increase, and then 2024, it's gonna to top out at 228 pesos, 228.75 pesos, or about $10.89, again, per day. And we're talking long work days 
to make $10. Now this is an important number to know. The minimum wage for Mexico will impact all expats moving to Mexico, particularly now that they're starting to crack down on this tourist visa runs and things of that nature. If you are applying for residency, this is the number that they use to determine your financial requirements. So in 2022, in 2021, that number is one thing. And in 2022, it's going up by 22%. So in 2022, if you were trying to apply for residency based on your investment portfolio, you're going to need roughly 5,000 days times the minimum wage, which will be an increase in 2022. Assuming a 21 exchange rate, 20 pesos to one US dollar, you're gonna need at least $43,217 US dollars in the bank for a minimum, I believe, of six months. If you're doing this based on income, your monthly income from a job that you have back in the States, etc., you need 300 days of minimum wage. You're gonna need almost $2,600 per month to qualify for temporary residency here in Mexico based on your income. So those numbers, the minimum wage numbers, absolutely have an impact on not just the, the local population here um, and, and, and the guidelines for what they should make. It also has an impact on any immigrants or expats that are moving to Mexico, like myself, that need to qualify for residency. And I highly recommend that you get your residency before you come to Mexico if you plan to live here. All right, if you remember two Yucatan News Weekly updates ago, I talked about the Cijado land in the municipality of Halicon and how those folks were saying, hey, you're building this Mayan train and you're coming through our land and you're disturbing what we're able to do on this land with the construction of this Mayan train. Well, the, the Mayan train project, the person that was responsible for the Ijado land and the Mayan train project, the funds that were distributed by the government, that person has been removed from office. So um, it, in a vote of 426 of 500 members, they chose to remove that person from office. Apparently there was something uh, suspect about the funds and how it was distributed. And so, you know, the article was saying, hey, we didn't get our money. Well, that person has been called to task and, and replaced. Two weeks ago, the Ben and Va perimeter bus began its services and that bus circles the perimeter of the city. It's now active. It covers 120 colonials, over 155 different routes of more than 50 kilometers. Over 4,000 passengers have already used this service since it began and they have something that the city buses internally don't have and that's a digital payment option. They also have paying with Effectivo. So these buses, the, the buses that they got for the Benny Boss service are state of the art, they're modern. They even have bike racks on the front, which is something that is um, a little different. You don't get that with the city buses. And if you saw, if you've seen any of the city buses, you know how old and antiquated those buses are. So to see the Ben and Bob buses going um, is pretty impressive. And the, the bus stops look pretty modern. They've created new pedestrian ways for people to get to the bus since this thing is on the peripherical, like the expressway around, uh, around the city. It's kind of like 285 if you're from Atlanta or 495 in DC or any of those major roads. That's what our peripherical is here in Medida. So they now have a bus that goes around the perimeter, which will save folks a ton of time. If you're interested in seeing what this service is like, let me know. Leave me comments below. I'll make a video riding the bus service so you can kind of see how new it is, where it goes, that kind of thing. Try to make it interesting. So if that's something you want to see, leave me comments below. Updating on COVID, I've been following this over the last few weeks and the numbers are now below 20 new cases per day and only one or two fatalities per day. Everything is open. There are still some restrictions in terms of capacity, like I believe uh, restaurants and bars and things of that nature can only be open to 75% of their capacity, uh, but they can be open until, you know, I believe 24 hours now. I know bars can be open until at least two in the morning. So we did something a few weeks ago in celebration of, of uh, a big moment that we had. We actually went to a speakeasy here in Merida. There's actually a couple speakeasies um, here in Merida that if you don't know about them, 
check them out. They're pretty cool. So in this one, this particular one, you go in through, uh, I'm not even going to tell you. So there's a couple speakeasies here in Merida. Check them out. If Omicron has already hit Mexico. And so they've already identified one person that traveled and came back and had the Omicron variant. And whether or not that makes it to Merida is still unseen. But, you know, we didn't have a traditional third wave like most of the world. Um, we were able to keep things pretty steady for, you know, the, during that third wave. And we didn't have to um, reopen our, our auxiliary hospitals and things of that nature. So if it does hit and there is a new wave of, of you know, uh, this pandemic, we would be actually in the third wave of the pandemic as opposed to the fourth wave like the rest of the world. The good news here is that more than 80% of the population has been vaccinated for COVID-19. So provided that we continue to do all the measures that got us to green, which is wearing our mask, sanitizing our hands and feet when we go into a place, that should help prevent you know, such a huge spread. All right, speaking of things that are open, one of the things that we haven't been able to do for a year because of the pandemic is decorate the city. You've heard me mention this in previous videos, how festive this place is around Christmas, and you can absolutely see it right now. If you're interested in seeing a video about all the decorations that they have going on, leave me comments below. I'll definitely make that video for you before Christmas. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. But the city now has been out and they've decorated. They have 120 employees that have decorated around the city. The Gloriettas, which are our roundabouts, which are everywhere here in Medida. I don't think there's another place other than maybe Washington, D.C. that has as many Gloriettas as we do or roundabouts. But the city has been out decorating all the Gloriettas. And the Gloriettas here are sponsored by different companies. So for instance, Burger King has gone really big this year and they've decorated the Glorietta closest to them, which I believe is called Plaza La Paz, which is actually where the underpass that we've been talking about is located. So Burger King has really gone crazy when it comes to that decoration and it's pretty cool. So Telcel, Nipolito, Lagasse, Coca-Cola, and the cookie company Dundee have all sponsored roundabouts. And that's just to name a few around the city. And they are going hard when it comes to um, all of these decorations. In addition to that big old 45 meter tree that we talked about, all of these things are lit up. And then at the very end of the main street, which is Paseo de Montejo and what we call the Ramada, there is, um, it's especially decorated by Coca-Cola and all of those things. Many of the parks are decorated, Parque Alamon, Parque Santiago, Mejorada, Santa Lucia, Parque Las Americas, which is in uh, Garcia Hineris, has a uh, Christmas comedy show that is running from December 4th through the 23rd from at 7.30 in the amphitheater there in Parque Las Americas. So go by and check that out. A few weeks ago, we had a jazz festival, a taco festival, and just ended on Monday. Yesterday, we had the Tlaque Art Festival was here in Merida. And that festival, um, I've done a lot of souvenir shopping throughout the country, and they had vendors from Tonala, they had vendors from Tlaque Paki that I've been to their stores and recognized some of their things that were at this festival. They had vendors from Oaxaca. They had vendors from Peru. They had vendors from all over here in Merida. And it was a really cool place to pick up a couple Christmas gifts. So if you haven't been out and about, or if you're coming, take a look at all the things that are coming out. It's really, really special time. The weather's perfect. And we are back to business in terms of events and things of that nature. If you're interested in more news stories on a more frequently basis, check out the Yucatan News Weekly Update Extras. It's over in the members section. So become a member. Check it out. Until next time, this is Mexit Plans Monty. I'm out.